Welcome to M Touch Crime Beat. I'm Officer Don with Fayette Commonwealth Attorney Ray Larson. Out of jail, okay? Don't mess up. And those are the people, those repeat offenders, the ones that go to prison. And I say we're the number one rated radio show in the whole country. Everyone is, uh, of course, uh, talking and concerned about what's happening in, in Ferguson with all the, uh, the unrest there after a police officer uh, shot. Uh, an individual that uh, he says was attacking him. What is, uh, what's your I don't know that he on? said that. Uh, yeah. You don't know that? Oh, you went, I guess that's what you're getting to. We get a lot of information, but nothing is clear yet, right? Well, everybody is, th this is yet another one of these situations that is being politicized. Um, you know, one of my friends on the, at the National District Attorneys Association is, is a prosecutor in St. Louis County named Bob McCullough and he has come under fire over there uh, because the, no, I don't know, there's some, somebody wants him uh, recused from the case because his father in the 60s was, was a police officer yeah. and was shot and killed by uh, a black guy that was uh, that they were trying to arrest mm -hmm. and uh, they think that that would keep him from being fair and impartial. So, so he's the prosecutor in the county that this occurred? Yes. Okay, it's the governor of that state, or the fine governor of that state that says that he should step down uh, because of that. That's I just read that this morning. Um, and of course the lieutenant governor of that state is going against the governor and saying, you know, that's BS. There's no reason this prosecutor to have to step down in this case. Uh, we don't even know if there's anything to prosecute yet. That's that's the thing. And, and you were, you know, we, we mentioned that the officer claims he was attacked. The chief of police in Ferguson, and I, and I did see this conversation that he had on one of the news channels, you know, he, he did say that the officer was attacked. He did say that initially. Uh, now, since he's backed off uh, what appeared, I guess, to him to be more of a, initially a cut and dry situation where a police officer was attacked and he responded has now turned into a political mess so he's, he's you know he is, he's clammed up now I know you working with you in prosecuting cases you wouldn't want the chief talking in the first place at all to anyone uh, which makes sense because this is the kind of stuff that you well have to you do. know Don they have to now because the, 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 they're not in the business when I say this case has been politicized they're not in the business of paying attention to this case. There are two sides here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and it's become a black-white issue, a racial issue. <clears throat> and it's the, the people are trying to, to win the public opinion. Mm -hmm. It's just like this Hamas thing. They want pictures of kids, okay. you see. Now, it's so it's, uh, now, I'll tell you this. Uh, you, the, the, as a prosecutor and as a former police officer, you look at these uh, outlaws, these hoodlums, who have, have t taken this as an excuse to do nothing but steal. Yeah. That's what they're doing. They're stealing. They're thieves that are breaking into these businesses. I watched, I watched something on television of a, a, a store owner. You know, he just is sitting there thinking, what in the world is happening? Listen, happened to me? This is, that's how this started. If you go back and you look at the video of, of this, this guy that was shot, uh, minutes earlier he went into a business and, and just took what he wanted, pushed the clerk down, then walked out in the street. And we know that as a fact. And the next fact is, at some point, that police officer uh, confronted this guy. We don't know whether the officer knew he was involved in that robbery. But it doesn't matter, because here's the reality of it. That police officer knew the guy, something wasn't right. And for whatever reason, he, he approached him. And at that point, it became this confrontation that, that wound up the officer having to shoot this guy. And that, that's what it boiled down to. You know, it, it, it just defies common sense not at least giving the police officer the benefit of the doubt. And I'll tell you why. The, it's real simple. A police officer's been a cop for like six years. He was doing his job. He was on patrol. There's no reason to believe that he would just randomly want to go out and shoot somebody. Now, does that mean that you don't investigate it and make sure that everything matters? Of course you do. But you don't start off on the premise 
that the officer must have been just out to kill somebody that day. That, well, that's, that's BS. Well, now that's one side. That's, that's, that's the side. There's not, that's, that is the side of it. We know that. You and I both know that, and anyone with any common sense knows that. Now, okay, let's, that, we got to stop there, though. Benefit of the doubt doesn't mean that, that something didn't go wrong. Now let's investigate it objectively and, uh, and, and see what, what, the, what the situation is. But instead, you've got the president, and who's split on one side, and 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 then you you've got the the people that are in the trenches that are split on the other. There's just no reason for it. Just investigate it and be done with it. The, the truth's going to come out. We had we, hope. A, <coughs> we had a case some time ago in this time in Lexington, where a, a police officer shot a young black man who was wanted. Um, and it was an uproar in our town. And uh, so, so what happened? I'm talking about T baby that was shot, correct? Is that the one? Which one are you talking about? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Right. And so what happens is we put the grand jury was in session, and we collected all of the evidence. Anybody that wanted to say anything about this came in front of the grand jury and testified. And the grand jury, after hearing all of the evidence, uh, determined that it wasn't a crime. Now, that doesn't mean it wasn't a civil case, but it wasn't a crime. And, and as a result, I had to go outside and face this throng of media types and that sort of thing. And here's what we said. We said, look, um, this incident occurred. The case was investigated thoroughly. Every bit of the evidence was presented to the grand jury, which is made up of 12 citizens of our community, randomly selected. They considered all the evidence that we presented, and they determined that there wasn't a crime. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. The end. And that was pretty much the end of it. Now, in this instance, uh, so what do you think? What do you think will happen if they, if if a police officer in this case is not charged? I don't care. I, well, well, I understand. No, that. But, but well, that's what you have to start off with. I don't yeah. care. Right. If he doesn't need to be charged, then he shouldn't be charged, and what happens happens. All right. Know? Burn the place down. You you don't charge someone just in the interest of political, exactly. political expediency. You just got to take that out of it. No different than how I'd feel if he is charged. You know, you, you just let it run its course. But I know this, right now there are, you know, are 40 federal agents that are, are trying to find, you know, where, where maybe this, this cop said something back in 1985 that they can somehow stick on them. They're not looking at the facts of the case is the point. We know that. You know, I'll tell you something interesting. During this, this case that I was talking about, uh, all of a sudden we got a we got a notification that the that the Department of Just Justice's Civil Rights Division was going to become involved in this thing. So I called them up. I said, "Come on, let's do this together." No, Let, we, that's not the way we do it. We want you to do it, and then we'll look at it and see if we think you did it right. And I said, "You know, that's interesting because that's precisely what I was going to do." Mm -hmm. Let you all do it, and then I'll review it and see whether you screwed it up. Mm -hmm. and, oh, well, all of a sudden, I, I'm not afraid of those yeah. people. Well, and the thing is, in the case that you're talking about in particular, it, it really was even a more difficult situation to be in because there, were not, there was no allegation that the officer was attacked in that case. It, it turned mm -hmm. out to be a very complicated situation. Uh, um, and, and that, I can't imagine, if, and this boils down to the community leaders. The way that was handled versus how, versus how they're handling this. You know, I mean, it's a whole different scenario. It's like there are people that want to stoke this and stoke this and stoke this. And the governor's one of them. The governor of that state shouldn't be involved in this other than reaching out to the, community, the, the leaders in that community and saying, how can we assist you in helping to return order to your city while you resolve this? It should, he should not be talking about prosecuting anyone. He wasn't there. He doesn't have a clue. He shouldn't be encouraging. You know, he shouldn't be giving the wink, wink. Somebody's head better roll. You know, and that's what they're doing here. And the and the police chief in that town, you know, he he obviously is intimately involved in what happened in this case, and and he's he wants to make sure that this officer is not just handed over just because of this incident. 
I did. No, did well, let me get the the police chief that you're met, you're talking about is the St. Louis police chief. Shots were initially fired from inside the cruiser, uh, but now we're, we're talking to the witnesses, and and we'll see what happens. That's what I saw from the Ferguson police chief. Right. You know, initially, I, I'm I, I can't speak to the St. Louis police chief. What what is his stance on? It? Is he just backing out of it, or see what's he doing? The St. Louis police yeah. chief. Yeah. No, no, he was talking about interviewing the officer, and that there was some evidence of trauma to his face. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what he said. Well, you know, and, and we don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. But the, and 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 it, of course, I'm a former police officer. So uh, automatically, one would think, well, you're going to stand with the cop. And to some extent, I have empathy for all the, for the situation because, you know, as police officers, we, you know, you're sort of there. But the reality of it is, even the police want to make sure that the justice is served. Uh, but they do expect the benefit of the doubt. And all that means is, don't start burning the city down. Let this thing be investigated. Don't assume that the cops are killed. Well, let's separate two things. Number one is the investigation of a shooting. Mm -hmm. That's number one. That ought to take place. Now, these outlaws that have taken the opportunity to, to burn buildings and to steal, it's basically stealing, uh, is, just, is, is the part that just is so offensive to me. And uh, I'm, I would hope that everybody would let this thing follow its course. But, Oh, well, stoking the fire. The whole thing about you know the, the federal involvement stokes the flames. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make anything any better. Uh, and and letting standing around and letting people throw rocks and bottles at you and Molotov cocktails and shoot at you doesn't resolve it either. It, I mean, it, you just have to let the police have. The police could could clear the streets if they would let them, and they could clear the streets without bloodshed, without a bunch. They they know what they're doing, but they but they don't. You know, they're they're they're, they're they're telling them to stand by and let people vent. Well, you know what? There, there are ways to, to there are ways to protest in this country, and we have a way of doing. What they're doing is is chaos, and, and it needs to be stopped. That's the bottom line. We're not going to stop it by just standing there and and, and taking it. So I, I don't know what they're doing, but we'll see. Um, you know, you've been in 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 the in the heat of these kind of situations before, and we've had situations in our community we talked about, but fortunately we were able to, I guess, see them through in the end. And hopefully in Ferguson they'll do the same thing. I hope. You know, it's, uh, my my friend Bob McCullough is uh, is a tough guy. Is he is he going to step down? Do you think, or is he going to stay with it? What do you, what's your thought? Well, I think he said that the governor has the authority to uh, replace him. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, if the governor does that, then the governor, I guess, can do it. But he he needs to have some reason. And uh, it, let me tell you something. Prosecutors, except the one in uh, Austin, Texas, yeah. is are interested in justice. You know, let's let, let's follow the evidence. Um, well, you know, the, the prosecutors are elected officials, and there's a reason they're elected, and they have to answer to the people that elected to them. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't have to answer to outside influence. You know, like the governor or federal officials. The people that elected that prosecutor will deal with that prosecutor if he doesn't do his job. And they, they have to they have to let that happen. That's why it's set up that way, you know. And that's the bottom. That's when it gets scary, you know. These that's the whole reason that the chain of